Hi, everyone. And in this lesson, we will be looking at a specific type of nonverbal reasoning question um, called matrices. OK, so what are they and how do they work? Um, well, if we look at the screen, we've got three different grids. OK, um, now don't focus too much on this as a question type. This is just for illustrative purposes only. only. Um, but what I do want to show you is how matrices can work. They can work vertically, horizontally or diagonally. So, for example, if we look at the triangles in each grid, we can see in the first grid, the triangles are vertical. They're going from top to bottom. Um, in the second grid, they are going horizontally from left to right. And in the third grid, they are going diagonally. OK, now this isn't a, a proper question, but it's just to illustrate that these are the directions in which we want to appreciate these questions. OK, um, so let's get look uh, further into these sorts of questions. Um, and remember, once we finish this video, there will be a worksheet in the description for you to practice. OK, um, so what we need to be able to do is we need to figure out what is the question? What is the object of the question? What object what object are we working with? So with matrices, we have a transition. We have a pattern change between two objects. OK, and we know that in the first grid, the change has occurred between these two. So we know that the grid is working from top to bottom, OK, vertically. Therefore, the question object is the triangle. We need to work out what would go in the top right box. In the second grid, once again, we know that these two are the same object, but something has changed between them. So therefore, we know that we have to find the answer to this triangle. This triangle has become the question. And in the third one, once again, these two are very much alike. So we want to find out how they've changed and therefore find find out what the answer would be um, in respect to this triangle, okay? So once again, we can see this is working from top to bottom, this is working from left to right, and this is working diagonally. Okay, that's important to remember that because with matrices, they can work in any way, all right? So let's look at a, uh, a proper question. So this is my turn, which means I'll go through this all by myself, and then I've got an example for you to go through, and then of course we've got the worksheet um, in the description. So firstly, on the left hand side here, I'll draw an arrow pointing to it. This is my question, okay? And I can see that there is a space missing and I need to figure out what goes in that space. And to do that, I've got to figure out what is the question? What is the object of the question, okay? Now, I think that this is the object of the question. This is the thing that needs to transform. This is the thing that needs to change. And the reason that I think that is because the other two objects are quite alike in some way. They're both quadrilaterals. OK, so I'm going to focus on finding out how they have changed. How has this object changed into this object? OK, and I've got to think about all the ways that it's changed. So the first thing that jumps out at me is the colour. It's gone from black to white. OK, so I've got to understand, I've got to appreciate that colour is a factor in this question. Now, if I look at my question, the object of the question, the arrows here, these are currently black and we know that the pattern at the moment is going from black to white. So these arrows need to be white in this, in this missing space. So that means I can already eliminate this option and this option. I can't eliminate the other two because they are both white arrows, okay? Um, so let's look at how else they change. Well, these rectangles here have decreased in size, okay? They have gotten smaller. They have become more narrow, okay? Um, so I have to apply that same pattern to these arrows. These arrows must get smaller. OK, um, so if we look at the two remaining options, we can see that option three here. They are the same size as the object in question. But the final option, they are much smaller arrows. So therefore, I have found my answer. This is going to be the answer to this question. OK, um, now. Have a go at doing this for yourself. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, give it a go and press play when you're ready. OK, so if you're listening to me at the moment, you should have attempted this question. Let's have a look at how this works. Well, firstly, I need to figure out what is the object of the question. OK, which shape am I trying to transform? Well, I know that the top left box and the top right box, uh, sorry, the top left box and the bottom right box are very, very similar. All right. So it's working diagonally, which means I now need to figure out how to transform this object, this image here. So let's work out what's going on. All right, firstly, 
can you see that this object is exactly the same? It is identical to this object. It's just been rotated 180 degrees, okay? So I need to do the same with this object, okay? I've got to rotate it 180 degrees. So if you can imagine turning that object upside down, what would it look like? And of course, it would look like either option A, option B, or option C. So I can rule out the final option. And then finally, we need to figure out, well, what else is going on in this transformation? And if we look at the example in the question, we've got a black square, which is transformed into a white square. So this rectangle needs to transform into a white rectangle, okay? Because it's going from black to white. So let's eliminate option one. Now we're left with two more options, okay? And you can see that they are in different positions. We've got a white rectangle at the bottom and a white rectangle at the top. So how are we gonna figure this one out? Well, we can see in the example, the squares are in opposite corners, okay? So I would expect that this rectangle should be on the opposite side, which leaves me with option T. So the answer must be option T. Okay, so now that we have gone through a couple of examples and hopefully you understand um, a bit more about matrices, in the description to this video, there will be a link to a worksheet where you can practice some more. Okay, thank you for watching and I really hope that's helped. Bye.